Hello everyone and welcome to tonight's webinar. My name is Josh and I'm the Future Student Coordinator here at the Australian Catholic University. So today's talk with industry webinar is all about nurses and midwives. Um, so before we get into the presentation today, I'd like to start off with an acknowledgement of country. So in recognising Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people's spiritual and cultural connection to country and in continuing ACU's commitment to reconciliation, I would like to commence this webinar by acknowledging the First Peoples and the traditional owners and custodians of the country where ACU campuses are located. We respectfully acknowledge our elders past and present and thank them, for the, and thank them that they have passed on their wisdom to us in various ways. Let us hold this in trust as we work and serve our communities. So today's webinar is all about nurses and midwives. So today you'll hear from our current students and our alumni. You'll be able to ask questions via the chat and we'll have a conversation with them about what it's like to study at ACU and where they are now in terms of their career. So no surprise, if it's a nursing and midwifery webinar, we obviously offer nursing and midwifery courses here at ACU. So we offer single degrees here at ACU. So we've got our Bachelor of Nursing on its own. Um, we've got our Bachelor of Midwifery on its own. Um, but then as you can see down the bottom, we also offer two double degrees. So we've got a Bachelor of Nursing and Business Administration double degree and a Bachelor of Nursing and Bachelor of Paramedicine double degree. So looking at this table that we've got here, not all of the courses are offered at every single campus. So for instance, nursing is offered at Ballarat. Blacktown, Brisbane, Canberra, Melbourne, and North Sydney, whereas the Bachelor of Nursing, Bachelor of Paramedicine is only offered at Ballarat, Brisbane, and Canberra. So if you want more information about some of these courses, please feel free to go online and you'll be able to view our entry requirements and get so much more course information there. Alternatively, you can actually contact our Ask ACU team and you can have a chat with one of our course consultants and get a lot more information. Similarly with postgraduate courses here for nursing and midwifery. So we offer a graduate certificate, diploma and a master in a range of different topics. So we've got um, um, clinical nursing, we've got mental, um, mental health nursing, master in uh, mental health, um, health professional education and health administration. So for each of these sort of course areas, we offer the graduate certificate, diploma and a master program. These courses are available online. Um, we've got also the North Sydney campus and um, that's face-to-face -face delivery mode for um, the graduate certificate, diploma, master in, in health administration course as well. So for more information about the courses that I just mentioned, uh, please feel free to visit our website or get in touch with our Ask ACU team. But I think what's a main part of this webinar tonight is hearing from our students, their experiences, and you can hear firsthand what it's like to study here at ACU. So we've got our alumni. So we've got Kate, Edwina and Marie. Um, at this stage, we've only got Kate. Um, we've had a few, um, uh, it looks like there's some tech issues um, at the moment with Edwina and Marie. Um, but we've also got our current students joining us tonight. So we've got Deborah and Rahima. So I will stop sharing my screen in a sec. Um, but if you've got questions throughout this webinar, you're more than welcome to use our Q&A function. So this is where you can post questions in the chat and we'll be able to put those to our panel members. If your question is very specific related to your personal circumstances and you need a bit more course information, I would strongly suggest that you save those for a consultation with an Ask ACU representative. They're your best point of contact for that. But if you've got general questions about nursing or midwifery or regarding a panelist's experience in their current profession or at ACU, feel free to pop them in the chat and we'll get to those, as many of those as we can um, in tonight's webinar. So without further ado, I'll stop sharing my screen and I'll ask all of our panel mem members to turn the, their cameras on. Fantastic. Okay. So the first thing I'll get you all to do is introduce yourselves. So I think we'll start off with Kate. Um, tell us a bit about yourself and what you're doing. Hi, thank you, Josh. Um, thank you all for having me here as well. Um, my name is Kate Dixon. I'm an alumni of ACU. I studied at ACU in Brisbane. I studied nursing, um, a Bachelor of Nursing in 2006 by the looks 
And um, I also undertook a, a Master's of Health Administration or Health Science in 2000 and finished that in 2015. I'm currently the Acting Director for uh, the Outpatients um, at the Royal Brisbane and Women's Hospital. Fantastic. Thanks so much for joining us tonight, Kate. Um, and I'll move over now to our current students. So we'll start off with Rahima. Hey, Josh. Thank you, everyone, for having me. My name is Rahima. I'm a third and final year nursing student at North Sydney. Um, I started off at ACU as a mature age student um, and I got into uni through work experience as an assistant nurse at Westmead Children's Hospital. So that's me. Thank you very much for sharing, Rahima. And lucky last, Deb. So could you please introduce yourself? Thanks for having me. Um, I'm Deb. I'm a third and final student um, studying midwifery. I um, studied part-time, so I started in 2018. So it's been five years and about to finish in a few months. Excellent. That's great. And that's really good to know that you've done that part-time because it it just goes to show that you can do um, different study modes, um, quite flexible to some extent uh, with your personal circumstances as well. So that's a good thing to note. So thank you very much, Deb. All right. So the first question that uh, I would like to put forward to our panel, what does a typical day look like for you? So obviously for Rahima and Deb, obviously studying at the moment and placement, um, but we'll start off, and I'll get to you in a sec, but we'll start off with Kate. Um, yeah. What does a typical day look like for you? So I'm currently not in a clinical facing role, um, which is a path of nursing, which you, you can kind of lean into as you progress in your career. Um, a typical day with nursing, if you're on the floor, um, is managing with patients. But my typical day, um, I tend to be more in a strategic uh, space trying to operationalise. So that's all fluffy words. It just basically means um, I'm trying to get the work to the front line so they can do the, you know, support the patients. So especially during the pandemic, all the directions that come through. So I support all of those. Um, and um, I have a lot of meetings and generally don't get to have my hands on with patients anymore, but still enjoy patient contact, which is um, lovely. So it's not, it's a, it's a different job because I'm not currently in a nursing role. I'm in a, um, what they'd call as an operational role. So uh, you sort of, as you go up the, the hierarchy, you get further and further away from the patient, but um, I'm lucky enough to still remain within the hospital and um, support um, a number of areas within the hospital. So yeah, uh, quite dynamic, I would say. My, my day doesn't seem to be the same every day. Okay. Um, but as a student, um, just thinking back after I finished my nursing year, um, nursing years, sorry, my, my graduate year, um, that was a really good year. They, um, they run really good transition programs in the hospitals where they, you feel really supported and you come out um, of ACU. I felt like I came out of ACU with a really um, great deal of knowledge and background from the work that I did there and was able to apply that, but felt supported in the workplace as well to transition from being a uni student into working um, pretty much full time. So Excellent. the um, yeah, the day to day stuff's um, pretty, pretty easy to do. It's, it's not that um, much of a stretch once you've done a few years of uni. Yeah, and you raised a good point there. Like, just because you do a Bachelor of Nursing, it doesn't mean you're going to be sort of front-facing in a ward. Um, you can actually work your way up and not be so, you know, in a clinical setting, as you've pointed out, Kate. So that's really good to know. And we've, you know, had that conversation as well, for instance, with our law students, just because they do a law degree, it doesn't necessarily mean that they have to become a lawyer. So I can, yeah, I totally see where you're coming from, but having that nursing background obviously is advantageous to where you're working. Yeah, I think that's the beauty with nursing is that you can um, you can go into different areas and different fields. You don't necessarily need to stay within nursing. Um, it kind of opens the door to anywhere in health and that industry yeah. and really anywhere in business. So you can take your knowledge and skills and apply that to a different um, career path if that's what you want. Within nursing, there's different career paths. So you can stay working clinically, clinically or you can... Um, you can take a career off into research, education, management. Um, there's a newer field kind of emerging, which is informatics, which is more around the digital space. So it's a really exciting place to work in healthcare at the moment. 
Excellent. Fantastic. Thanks for that. Uh, Deb, what does your typical day look like? Would you like to know from a uni perspective or when I'm on placement? Because I can give you both. All right, let's start off with the uni vibe, if you like. Um, okay. what, what is it like? <laughs> yeah, so um, in terms of midwifery, the years progress in terms of the demands. So you do your theory content um, and then you also do a clinical uh, lab class and at the end of um, those lab classes you do a practical exam so for your theory classes you have your written exam and then for your practical classes you have that practical exam and that qualifies you to go out on placement so at the end of the semester you would go out on placement um, then that happens for first and second year and then for third year you're doing placement and uni online at the same time. Um, so it's a nice juggling act, but the, the theory is that you should be independent um, as a practitioner by that point and able to manage your time. So in terms of a normal day for me studying at home, um, I have a child. So I study between the hours of nine and three um, and, you know, prioritise my time like that. And I study six days a week. I give myself one day off. Um, and when I'm on placement, it's just fitting it. It's fitting it in wherever. We can. Yeah. And I'll get back to placement as well. So that's another question I was going to ask a bit later on. So hold that thought. But thank you very much for that, Deb. Um, and Rahima, so what does a typical day look like for you? My typical day is very similar to Deb's. Yep. So as a uni student, I study full time. So we have a couple of units that are theory based. And then we normally have one practical unit per semester. <clears throat> so in that practical unit, we go to the lab every week. We practice our clinical skills in um, the set up hospital ward, but, um, kind of with mannequins and all of that. So we learn all the skills in there. And then we have a placement allocated for that unit. And then we go out to a hospital or a healthcare setting and practice those skills, put it to practice. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like a lot of fun. Kind of jealous that I didn't do this course, but yeah, that's really good to The mannequins good to know. are very fun. <laughs> yeah. I've heard, I've heard all about it. So yeah, that's great. Thank you very much for that. Uh, we've got a question come through the chat. Um, and I guess for all the panelists, because I guess you would all have different experiences related to this, um, but do you feel working in a pandemic has changed your views on your particular career? So obviously, Kate being a, at a director's level, um, and then Rahima and Deb, you know, having done placements and then about to get into the workforce. Um, what's your view at the moment? So maybe Kate, how's your view changed, I guess? Um, the pandemic was um, in, an interesting time to, to work in healthcare, but it, I think there's some really good stuff that's come out of it. Um, it's really challenged the way in which we deliver our services. So we've moved into more virtual, probably before, um, you know, a couple of years ago, we wouldn't be doing this sort of panel um, by virtual means, but we seem to do that a lot more and we do that with our patients also. Mm. Um, clinically, it has been obviously challenging across the board. Um, it's challenged and made us think about our models of care. So even though it, it can come, it can seem very challenging, it also can bring some really positive um, changes into healthcare because it's that rapid change we had to go through. So for me, the career wise, um, I wouldn't be anywhere else. It's, um, you know, you, you know, you're getting to see, be part of something that's once in a lifetime. That's amazing. I love the dedication and the, and the care, like that's what we want, you know, from our graduates, you're obviously very passionate about it. And that's, that's all we can ask. So that's, that's fantastic. Um, Rahima, um, how's your view changed of, you know, about to get into the workforce? Um, yeah. What are your views on that? I think the pandemic just showed us that this industry is always changing and adapting and we're always learning new things and there's always new things coming in. Um, and also as a uni student, we've gone to online studying for some of our theory units. So that's pretty much just what's changed. Yeah. And Deb, obviously, um, you know, being in Victoria, there was quite a harsh lockdown. You and I we were both stuck in it. Um, so in terms of being, you know, in the midwifery part of the hospital, um, what was your experience like? And I guess, you know, how's your view changed about, you know, getting into that type of job now? 
Um, my view didn't change. Um, it probably made me more passionate. Uh, there were times when uh, women weren't allowed to support people in with them. Yeah. Um, so that was really tough. Um, so that probably ignited even more of a passion um, to advocate for women. Yeah. Excellent. So what we want to hear. Fantastic. Um, we've got some more questions coming through the chat, which is absolutely fantastic. It's what we want to see. Um, I was going to save the placement question for later, but it's come up again. So we'll ask it right now. Um, so Deb, what's your uh, placement like? How have you found it? Um, so the amount of placements we do in midwifery, we have to do close to a thousand hours um, on placement. And so in first year you do, now it's two weeks in first semester, two weeks in second semester, and then a three week and a three week in second year. And then your final year, you're constantly on placement, you're on and off. Yep. Um, placements are great. Um, obviously that's where the theory comes to life um, and getting to be with women, getting to see new life come into the world is amazing. Um, it's where you learn whether you can do it or not. And yeah. it's just ace. It, it's obviously so much fun, um, but it is demanding because it's shift work and it's early or late and balancing life, doing night shifts. Um, the thing, One of the things I like about it here in Victoria is that we get to go to different hospitals. Um, we might not always be placed in the same hospital and it's really advantageous for when you go to apply for a job because you know what culture suits your personality. Yeah, excellent. And like you said, placements, different hospitals, you can network with different people. Um, you strike up those professional relationships, I guess. So that's really, yeah, like you said, very advantageous, different experience, different skills. So that's great. And Rahima, what's placement like for you? Um, so ACU has some great industry connections with facilities all around Australia. Um, I've done 800 hours of placement. I've just finished all of them and I've been to a variety of different specialties. I think it's very good to try everything so you figure out what you actually like and what you don't like. So I've done mental health. I've done medical, surgical. I've done community health. Um, but yeah, so they just, it just gets your foot in the door. You get a taste of all the specialties and you see what you, what you like. Excellent. And we've got another question coming through for our current students, so both for Deb and Rahima. Um, how do you manage classes online? Is it all face-to-face? -face? Um, how do you, so what are the study modes, I guess, since online learning um, and now, how have you managed your studies? So maybe Rahima, if you want to start, you know, well, your in, experience. Um, the semester I'm doing right now. Yep. Two of the units are on campus. So one was the practical lab. So that's always on campus because you can't really do your practical skills at home. Um, the other unit was on campus. And then the other two, one was online and one was an option. So you could do it online or you could do it on campus. So it was kind of up to you. So there's a variety in there and you see what you like. You see if you're motivated at home and if you can do it online. And if it's for you, then you can do that. Otherwise, if you like to go into campus, then obviously that option would be better for you. Yeah. And for Deb, is it a similar situation or obviously different course, but can you relate to Rahima's experience at all? Absolutely. Yep. So um, your practical unit is in the labs. It, you, like she said, you know, it's a bit hard to learn some of those practical <laughs> skills at home um, unless you had someone birthing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but most of ours were at most of our classes were online because of COVID. Um, but before that, they were in person and which was amazing and fabulous. Um, so, yeah, I believe now it's a bit it, it's more mixed, um, but that classes have resumed back in, on campus, which is great because it's about building those connections with your with the people that are going to su support you through that through the course because they know exactly what you're going through because they're going through the same thing. Absolutely. And yes, just studies are one part, being there in person, learning, using all of the equipment. That's great. But there's another part of university and that's getting involved in clubs, societies. There are so many things happening on campus that yes, studies are very, very important. We want you to do well in your assessments. Don't get me wrong, but there is so much to experience at university, make great friends. We are advocating for you all to have fun and join these clubs, join these societies because yeah, it's a great time of your life to be at university. So that's really, really, you know, good to hear. So thank 
thank you very much. Um, a question now for Kate, um, and then we'll put it through to our other panelists as well. Um, but what's the most rewarding part of your job? And I know Rahima and Debbie are not in the job at the moment, but you've been on placements. But um, for Kate, what's one of the highlights um, in your career at the moment? Um, I think getting to make a difference in someone's life is is something um, you can't place too much value. Like you can't even, I can't even express to you um, how much that can change you and those experiences you have being able to support a patient through probably their hardest or most challenging points in their lives. Um, so it's you, you feel incredibly rewarded and um satisfied by the fact that if you can make their their journey and their care better that um is you know how can you get much better than that in a career really that's exactly right and while you're not only dealing with patients uh you're also dealing with their family and friends um i've you know had relatives in hospital and of course myself as a visitor or you know, as a family member, um, the way that nurses and medical staff have, you know, treated us as visitors. Um, yeah, you're not only working for the patient, but you're, yeah, you're, you're so supportive of the family as well. So yeah, that's amazing. Um, and yeah, our current students. So Deb, obviously not working as a midwife at the moment, but yeah, what's, what's one thing that you found very rewarding? Um, definitely building the confidence of women and watching them become mothers and or parents. Um, that light bulb moment that they've done this extraordinary thing is just amazing. And absolutely, as Kate said, it's having it's the impact you have. And don't ever underestimate that. Some there might be days where you go home and you're like, oh, I don't feel like I nailed it. it was something was a bit off. But then the next day when you go back and you see them, and they're like, oh my god, thank you so much. It was that you were amazing. And you're like, oh, okay, that's awesome. So you've had impact even when you don't think you have. That's it. And sometimes they're at the most vulnerable times in their life. Um, so yeah, being that support is, yeah, is amazing. Um, and Rahima, um, what's the most rewarding thing about, you know, entering a nursing profession? Well, where I work at a children's hospital, these kids are very sad and they're very scared. So seeing them just get healthier and get better and getting their smiles back, I think that's just the best part. That's awesome. Fantastic. That's really good to hear. You're inspiring me now. Um, okay, we've got another question come through. Um, what are some of the challenges in your profession? Um, so that's the most rewarding thing. Um, but what are some of the, you know, yeah, some of the challenges that, that you face, maybe not on a day to day basis, but, um, you know, overall, what, what's something that you that you think, you know, that's a challenge for you. So we'll start off maybe with Kate um, in your role. Um, well, the pandemic is obviously yeah. one of the biggest challenges. Um, from, a, from a nursing career perspective, I think adjusting sometimes to um, working uh, all hours of the, of the day um, can be an adjustment for some people. It is something, shift work can be um, sometimes difficult, but the other part of the good part of nursing is that you don't necessarily have to work shift work. You can go into streams that allow you to work the hours that you want. So there's that flexibility in it too. So um, that's probably the challenge. I think um, I would say as well from a from a nursing perspective, just being able to sort of uh, there there can be a bit of a hierarchy within nursing, and um, you know when you there's um, old school nursing, which is sort of going away now that we have unis. Um, but there was a bit when I started that there was people who hadn't gone through university and there was a bit more judgment made on what universities can achieve. But I think as that, um, you know, people leave the profession and the university trained um, students come through, that's changing. Um, and especially I will just give a big shout out to ACU. We, ACU has a, an amazing reputation in hospitals. It, basically, if you get an ACU student, you know that you're going to have a good student and that they're going to be able to, they'll have the basics under wrap because the uni's taught them well. So we know um, ACU uh, produces good nurses and midwives and other students, of course. Yeah, of course. And I, <laughs> I was also a student um, here at ACU. I did a commerce degree. So yeah, I think that, yeah, I enjoyed my course. So and I'm sure you've all enjoyed your courses. 
here at ACU. And that's a good thing to know. So not only when graduates, yeah, graduates leave ACU, they're very professionally minded, they know what they're doing, but they also have a massive ethical consideration as well, um, being able to make a positive impact in whatever field that they want to get into. And that's how I think, you know, ACU graduates stand out from the crowd. So yeah, thank you very much for that. Okay. Um, Deb, what's a challenge that you face? Uh, maybe at university, maybe is it, you know, balancing your studies and, you know, your social life or your personal life, but yeah, what, what's maybe a challenge at the moment as a student? Um, I'm going to go with a placement example. Okay. Um, yep. Our, as midwives, our work's not always happy. Um, yep. So sometimes you could um, be in a birth where the baby's struggling to transition to the outside world and we do have to perform resuscitation. So um, as wonderful as seeing life come into the world is, there, there are times when we're put in emergency situations and it gets really hectic. Um, and it's something just to be really mindful of that you will be doing because, you know, it's, it, it has an impact on you um, as it should. And um, it's just about having those support structures around you and knowing how to deal with that. So that's definitely a really big challenge um, and probably speaks to the fact that I'm transitioning from uni into, into the workplace and doing more out, in, um, out in, in the placement world. But in terms of being, I reckon one of the things that was a challenge um, is a really big challenge in midwifery as a course is being across all the requirements because there's lots of things that you have to be across. So it's not just your course content, it's you've got to follow 10 women um, on top of your studies where you follow them through their pregnancy, their birth and their postnatal period um, across the three years. You are having to do um, uh, almost like a practical exam when you're at the hospital, you've got various um, assessments you have to get ticked off. You've got hours you've got to have signed. You've got um, um, episodes of care, a certain amount of those. So there's lots and lots of requirements. So being across those, that's really challenging. Um, but, you know, the university are very good at supporting you and reminding you, but it, it is a lot to be across. Yeah. And I think that's a testament, you know, even there is so much to be across, you just, that's an extra layer of professionalism that you do get, being able to manage your time, um, your studies, but also your work commitments or your placement commitments as well. And that continuity of care program where you do get to, you know, go on that journey with real life, um, you know, give it, like being in that birthing suite, um, you know, that real life experience, that firsthand experience of real families, um, that's always been a a standout for our students as I've been told so um, yeah that's so many prospective students have got that to look forward to um, as part of their degree which is totally amazing um, and Rahima um, what about your experience? I would say a big challenge is adapting to all the new workplaces when you're out on placement and trying to fit into the ward routines and how they work with each other but most of the time you find that the nurses are happy to have a student they're happy to teach you they want you to learn and um, as Kate said, they know that ACU students are very good, so they're happy with us. Um, and also, sometimes you might have assignments due while you're on placement, but it's all about time management and organising your time well and just prioritising that. Yeah, excellent. Um, and Rahima, correct me if I'm wrong, you mentioned before that you're working currently in a children's hospital, is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so we've had a question come through the panel. Um, how do you become like a specialist nurse? So can you work as um, a paediatric nurse straight away or can you work in theatre or how do you become sort of that specialist nurse? So there is no other certificate that you need. Well, this is in Sydney, New South Wales. I know that there's no certificate that you need to become a paediatric nurse. So I got in through a TAFE certificate, so just a general healthcare assistant certificate. Um, and for after when you finish your studies, you can become a paediatric nurse as well without further studying. Yeah, fantastic. And Kate, do you um, know much about that in this space? So, um, you know, if you want to, you know, work um, with an, you know, an ethetist or whatever it is, um, is there a way that you can, you do that in, in nursing? Yes, absolutely. I think um, one of the, sort of a misconception is, is that there's only really the wards to work in, but there's some really cool places to work in in nursing that's not ward orientated. So theatre is one of them, anaesthetics, recovery, 
ICU, emergency nursing, mental health nursing. There's so many different areas clinically you can start off in. And how they um, support you is that you do a graduate program. So there's a, a, a year normally that where you're well supported and you have some modules that you usually have from the workplace that you need to complete. Some of them actually then go on to articulate into university graduate uh, certificates. Um, so it's really well supported. And they what they do is put you with um, a, a senior nurse that can support you throughout your program or a couple because they might be on, on a different shift. Um, so it's it's um, really well supported. And that's basically sort of where you go. You, you, once you start doing your pracs, you kind of work out what interests you and what doesn't interest you. And you generally kind of head in that way. But I will say you don't have to stay in that way either. So if you if you head in a direction and you, you do it for a few years and realise, actually, this isn't for me, I don't really want to do um, ward nursing or I don't want to do theatre nursing, whatever it is, you can actually just change again. <laughs> so that's the beauty with nursing. It's very flexible. Yeah, excellent. Um, and while we're on the topic of nursing as well, so I'll ask both Kate and Rahima, what made you choose nursing um, over an other health related courses or careers? Um, maybe Kate, if you want to start, what was it about nursing that drew you to that profession? Oh, mine's a bit cheesy. My mum was a nurse. Go on, we all have a cheesy. Oh, okay, fair enough. Um, yeah, my mum was a nurse. Keeping it in the Her family. Mum was a nurse, so it runs in the family. Yeah. Um, I think. I. I mean, I. Oh, yeah. I'm cheesy. I wrote it when I was in in preschool. I wrote that I wanted to be a nurse when I grew up. So really, I think I just saw my mum and saw that. But you know what? That's not cheesy at all. Like I think it's that. It, obviously, that has an impact on the type of person yeah. that you are. So, yeah, I think that's it's beautiful because yeah, you've got that role model who is a nurse, and you probably want to continue on in that environment. Um, yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. yeah, and helping people. I think. I think. I mean, I always liked helping people just in life or helping. I don't know, helping out where I could, but that's that's sort of the person that draws you. You know, you you kind of want to be able to assist people, but and be a bit altruistic. But um, that's I guess that's the sort of the draw card there is that you get to do that. I used to like to work. I worked in a pet shop when I was in high school, and I loved helping animals, but I could never help um, poor animals getting put to sleep or something like that. So helping people um, was much easier for me than than animals. <laughs> Than animals, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And Rahima, what about yourself? Um, what drew you to nursing? I'm the first nurse in my family, so there's no oh, okay. family. So you're but, the role model for future yeah, well, actually, relatives little, to come. My little sister's already saying I want to be a nurse like my sister. <laughs> Excellent. But Excellent. Um, I've just been passionate about helping people as well, and I just have a genuinely like a caring heart. So that's what I wanted to do. Fantastic. It takes a certain type of person to work as a nurse or a midwife. Um, so yeah, that's really good to hear that ACU graduates are, are that way inclined um, to make that impact. So that's fantastic. We've got another question come through. Um, I guess I'm happy to answer this question. Um, is religion a significant component you know, of ACU being you know, a Catholic institution? So yes, we have a very proud identity um, as a Catholic university, um, but we accept people of all faiths and all backgrounds. Diversity is something that we really do cherish here at ACU, so everyone is welcome, okay? So you won't necessarily be doing religious studies in your course. What you will be doing, though, is exploring values and key concepts that are not just exclusive to Catholicism. I'm sure many other faiths and religions embrace values such as dignity of the human person, the common good, treating others how you want to be treated. So these key values that we have as a university, how are we going to then use those values in our chosen profession? So no matter what course you study at ACU, whether it's nursing, whether it's midwifery, whether it's law or commerce, whatever it is, everyone will undertake uh, units called the core as part of the core curriculum and that's where you will explore these values that I mentioned earlier in greater detail and how you'll make that positive impact. So yes around campus you will notice religious symbols and we do celebrate events such as Christmas and Easter and all that sort of stuff we have mass that run every day but also we acknowledge that there are people who aren't Catholics um, and we have multi-faith rooms on campus and we also welcome them as part of the ACU community so it's a great part of ACU uh, to have such a diverse community and such a welcoming community. Um, and that, that 
I think that's very important in the workplace as well, because um, you are going to be working with, you know, especially in healthcare, working in, you know, with families of different religious beliefs, um, working in hospitals, different environments. So yeah, having that ability to understand other people's views, um, I think is really important. So yeah, I hope that answered your question. Um, let's have a look at some more questions come through. Okay, what's the biggest myth or misconception about your role or the industry? Maybe we'll start off with Deb this time. Um, do you want to have a, a myth buster moment? Yes, midwives don't play with babies. Um, in fact, we're there to be with a woman um, and a baby is the extension of her. So we actually see them as a dyad. Um, we're also not nurses. Well, not necessarily nurses. If you're doing the direct entry, you might have come from a nursing background, but we, we share some intersectionality, I suppose, with nurses, but we are specialists in what we do. It's very intricate, high level knowledge that we need to have. Um, and it's an art form and both a technical job at the same time that's equally demanding and rewarding in nature. Yeah, fantastic. And that's good because we always get asked, you know, if I'm a midwife, can I work as a nurse? Or if I'm a nurse, can I work as a midwife? So thank you very much for settling that for us. That's great. Um, and Kate, maybe in your situation, um, what's maybe one of the biggest myths that, you know, that you want to bust for us in terms of, you know, working higher up in a hospital um, from maybe being, you know, front facing in a ward to in the current position that you have? Yeah, I'd say, um, one of I I find like TV always puts out that basically doctors run hospitals, um, yep. but it's actually nurses. Um, we're running the hospitals. Um, we are there twenty four seven with patients, and the um, the hospitals are really truly run by nursing. And so the workforce within a hospital and the opportunities that it affords um, is immense. So you can you can have your career, you can start it in a hospital here in Australia, go overseas and travel and work. You, you've got the skills are so transferable. It's um, it's it's such a good opportunity. Um, and the other thing is I, I touched on it earlier is just being um, that you don't have to just work in one area of nursing. You're not I think there used to be this old kind of view that you had to go and do certain amounts of time on the ward and then you could go and specialise. That's all kind of gone away. You can do whatever you like. There's no right or wrong. You, you know, I started in the operating theatres and now I'm running out patients. They've got no relation. So um, you can do whatever you want. And, you know, in five, 10 years time, I'll probably do something different too. So um, I think that's that's the, the myth of nursing, that it's just nursing. You can you honestly can go, take let it take you where you, you want to go. Yeah, and we're living in an environment where everyone's adapting to change. They want to move on to different careers, different possibilities, um, and just a change of scene. And I think that's what you've done as well. So, yeah, there are so many different avenues that you can undertake. So that's great. And, yeah, I'm glad that inspires some of our audience members here today. Um, and Rahima, what about yourself? Mine's very very similar to Kate's. It's that you have to do night shift as a nurse. Yep. So that's not true. There's... Um, a lot of nursing jobs do consist of night shift, but there's also many that do not. So you can do um, day shifts as in like day surgery nursing or there's just a lot other than that. Yeah. And while I've got you as well, Rahima, um, throughout your studies, um, how what does a full-time study load look like? So maybe how many days are you on campus? Are you able to have that work-life balance? Can you work part-time? So do you want to share your experience? Um, so in my first and second year, um, it was a lot more heavy with content compared to third year because they do give you a lot of placement in your third year. So they shorten the time you're on campus and they give you more placement then. So you are trying you, you are trying to balance work and uni. You need to have an income somewhere. So yep. it's just um, finding the time to do your assignments and keeping up to date with lectures and tutorials. Um, and yeah, having a schedule and a planner is essential, I would say. Having the date set out of all your assignments when they do and just figuring out when you can pick up a shift or when you're on your break at work, maybe doing some of your essay. That's what I do. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, and Deb, um, in your situation at the moment, how do you 
balance everything you know what's up what's a full-time study load for you and just so we are clear and correct me if i'm wrong um, a full-time study load is four units a semester um, and part-time is roughly two is that right deb in your situation yes so for the first three two and a half years i did two subjects per yep. semester and then i went to three um, I also did some summer and winter subjects in there. So yep. um, I'm actually at three units. It's considered a full-time load. Um, so in terms of prioritising, I wish I could turn my computer screen. I've got a, <laughs> um, <laughs> I've got a calendar that sits next to me and I plot in all my assignments. Um, and I also have them in a list form. So I've got, I've got two. So, it, you know, the list when I cross it off makes me feel immense joy. Um, <laughs> I believe and, it. <laughs> yeah. um, but I also I have the calendar there so I can actually start prioritizing my time, my weeks when, when I start needing to look at research for a particular assignment. Um, but at this stage, I try as much as possible to get most of my course content done before I go on to placement. Yeah. Um, and I save very minimal amount of coursework or assignments when I'm on placement because it is really demanding. Working full time is really demanding in a very demanding job where you it's it's very um, it's physical, emotional, mental, psychological. You need everything to give to the, the people that you're looking after. So um, I try and get it all done as much as possible before that. Yeah, awesome. And while I've got you, Deb, we've got another question come through the chat that I'm sure you can answer on behalf of the panelists. Do you get paid when you're on placement? You do not get paid. Yeah, so it's all part of your course um, requirements. This is a chance for you to actually go out into the field. It's basically another method of learning. So you're not actually going to be in a classroom learning. You're actually in a hospital learning. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, there's no payment um, to be on placement. That's part of your course requirements. Um, so yeah, that's one thing to know. But think of it this way, what you are gaining by going on placement is so much experience, so many skills that will help you set yourself apart from other graduates and other candidates when it comes time to applying for a job. Um, so thank you very much for that, Deb. Um, a question for Kate, we've come through the chat now. I'm not sure if you know the answer to this question, but do you have any information or advice about pursuing uh, a career as a flight nurse, for example, with the Air Force or Royal Flying Doctor Service, perhaps? Um, yeah, there's, look, there's a few opportunities um, to get into those pathways. So if you're looking to do RFDS or care flight, you probably need to be looking at paramedicine, which is a course that ACU does offer. Um, that's probably more what I would suggest rather than nursing. Um, the Air Force also um, do offer, you can become a nursing officer in the Air Force um, and do work through there. So there's a few different um, avenues, but I would suggest getting in touch with those um, areas that wherever you're keen to work in, because you want to make sure that you're, you're going in the right direction. If not, if you're interested in all of that, um, the, the action that comes, um, emergency nursing is, is um, and trauma nursing is, is where it all comes through. So at the Royal Brisbane, we have a helipad and we get all of the um, care flights um, through to us and they transfer them straight down to emergency and um, we provide the um, resuscitation and et cetera that needs to be done there. So, um, and so there's different opportunities in nursing, but um, I'd probably suggest paramedicine. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much for that. Um, and Kate, while I've got you, just thinking back to your time at ACU, and I'll go around to our panel members, uh, all of our panel members now, um, but what support services were there available at ACU? How did you feel supported throughout your degree? Like what's one thing that you, you know, looking back at your time at ACU, how did you feel supported? What What's one thing that's really stood out to you? One thing that really stood out to me was um, when I would speak to my friends who were at other universities, they would talk about how big their lectures were, like there's so many students and that they really didn't feel like, um, they just felt like another number. Um, whereas my um, lecturers all knew my name and always um, were super friendly and helpful whenever I needed anything. And in fact, when I did my master's degree, the um, course coordinator for that was in my undergrad and remembered me. And it just feels a lot more personal. Personal. It feels. It felt like I wasn't just another number for the for the uni to get through. I felt like um, I felt valued. I think that's that's really what I'd like to say. 
Yeah. yeah, that's great. No, thank you very much for that, Kate. Um, and Deb, what about what about you? I'm typing answers. Can you ask the question again? <laughs> no, that's all right. Um, let me have a look. I've lo I've lost my train of thought here. I'm Let's sorry. I've no, no, that's the okay. Flow. I've had. A, I'm just going through my questions now. Oh, support services. That's right. Um, oh, what's, yes. one thing, what's one thing that's, I had to think there for a sec. I got so caught up in Kate's response. Um, what's one thing that stood out for you in terms of, you know, support services and how you've felt along your ACU journey? Yeah, great question, actually. So there's academic skill, there's an academic skills unit at uni. So transitioning into uni and writing academically can be quite challenging. Um, and particularly with, with, with midwifery, they expect a very high level of academic writing so utilizing that service along with studiosity which is a free service that reads your essays is amazing um, so that's one aspect but the teaching team in midwifery much like what Kate said they all know you they've got pictures of you up in their office so that they know like it's very personal um, they are midwives themselves. So they, you know, they're on that journey with you. So um, they absolutely help you through and encourage you um, to explore, I don't know, different ways of doing things or thinking about things or suggesting different um, webinars or professional development to expand your knowledge. It's, yeah, very, very supportive in terms of uh, the teaching team, um, as well as the students. We've got a really, really um, supportive network. Yeah, excellent. Thank you very much, Deb. Um, and Rahima, uh, remember the question this time. So I've got that covered. Um, yeah. What's one support service or what's one thing that's really stood out for you in terms of your whole ACU experience? Um, so one service that has been amazing is in your third and final year, they help you land a graduate nurse job. So they help you write your resume. They help you apply for the job. They help you with interview tips and they even help you to register with APRA, which is like the registration for health professionals. So this unit has been so helpful to me throughout these last few months applying for a graduate nurse job. Um, and now I feel so confident. I've had my interview, I'm still waiting my results, but I feel very confident. And it's all thanks to this um, ACU dedicated graduate nurse thing. Yeah, excellent. Um, and we've got another question come through the chat that I'm happy to answer. And maybe Deb, if you wanted to contribute as well. Um, after this webinar, if you wanna learn about you know, being a midwife in you know a bit more detail, what some of the things that you can do. Um, I'm not sure if this has come from a high school student or perhaps a non-school leaver. For instance, if we're a high school student, we run events happening um, throughout the year. For instance, our Discover ACU event, that's a hands-on event. We can actually come onto campus and participate in hands-on workshops and have a chat with our academics, our current students, to get a bit more information about what it's like to be a midwifery student. You can also contact our Ask ACU team to get a bit more information about the course. If you're a non-school leaver, you might want to join a campus tour, book a one-on-one -on -one consultation with us, and you can find out a bit more information that way. Um, our course website as well. There's heaps of information online about the course. But Deb, is there any way that the general public can get in touch, you know, with a hospital um, to learn about midwifery, perhaps in greater detail? Do you know of anything of that nature? No, um, and I probably wouldn't encourage that anyway. But I, um, Jen Hocking is our course coordinator and she would be your best point of call for all things ACU midwifery related. Yeah, so if you do have, if you'd like to get more information about midwifery, definitely get in touch with Ask ACU, and then they can then refer your inquiry onto the relevant staff member um, to get more information to you. So yeah, thank you very much for that, Deb. That's great feedback. Um, just looking at the time, and I think we've got time for one more question. If we don't get around to answering all of your questions today, as I mentioned a bit earlier on, what you can do is get in touch with Ask ACU. We've got a great team there for prospective student inquiries. They can then triage your inquiry to the relevant staff member, whether it be admissions or scholarships or a member of academic staff or faculty staff. They can find out the relevant information for you. Um, but we've got time for one more question. And I think it's something that's quite personal um, for you for you all to answer and for you all to you know share your own individual experience what's one bit of advice you would give to a prospective student or to any member 
of our audience today about studying nursing or midwifery and about your career in general? Like what's one, what's one thing you think everyone should know about your experience and about entering the workforce? So maybe we'll start off with our nursing director. We'll start off with Kate. Um, what's one bit of advice that you would like to impart onto the audience? Um, probably to let them know that you can do it. It's, um, I really didn't enjoy school when I was um, studying at school. I didn't, I think I found the, the subjects too broad. There was too much to go, to go on. And um, whereas when I did nursing, I really found it was focused. You're learning one area of, of, of um, interest is, you're not sort of learning English, then maths and then da, 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 da. Um, so it's, simpler for, for learning. I found my undergrad to be much better than school. I was more engaged. I enjoyed it. Um, and then I've enjoyed nursing. And so my advice would be to do, just do it. Um, if, if you're not sure, you can try it. And if you don't like it, you can always do something else. But um, the opportunities it provides um, is sort of not comparable to any other career. So absolutely um, encourage anyone who's who's thinking of doing it to just just do it yeah thank you very much for that Kate and for everything that you've contributed to this discussion today we really appreciate your insight it's it's fantastic um, Rahima uh, as a current nursing student about to get into the workforce what's one bit of advice that you'd give to an audience member here tonight I would 100% recommend getting a job as an assistant nurse just after your first placement, you're able to work in a hospital. You can figure out what you like, get your foot in the door, get a taste of all the different specialties and figuring out what you like. And during that, you can find a mentor, someone to look up to, someone you can go to advice for. I would just recommend doing that. Fantastic. And that's the thing. It's about chatting to people who are in the field, getting all that information. And this is a great place to start for our audience members. You're actually hearing from professionals and current students who are about to enter the workforce or who already are in the workforce. Um, so this is a great way for you to get all of that information. So yeah, thank you very much, Rahima, for sharing your experiences tonight. Um, we really appreciate it. And lucky last, Deb, um, what's one bit of advice um, for the audience in terms of maybe studying at ACU or wanting to become a midwife? Um, it's actually a question that's come up already, um, which is fantastic. And I would say, make sure you've got adequate support structures because it is really, it's a very demanding job. It's a demanding course and it's a demanding job. Um, there are some enormous highs, but unfortunately there's some pretty crappy lows. Um, and you're going to meet yourself in some very vulnerable ways along the way, um, along that journey. So those support structures are really, really important. Yeah, fantastic. And yeah, um. Thank you very much, Deb, for sharing your experience. And I'm, yeah, I'm very interested and keen to hear, um, you know, what your situation is like moving into your job as well. And for Rahima as well, you're about to get into your profession. So I can't wait to hear the exciting things that you're going to be doing. And Kate, obviously, um, the amazing work that you do. So yeah, on behalf of the university and, and all of our audience members, we just want to say a big thank you to you as our panelists for sharing your experience. And yeah, to our audience members, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Um, we hope we've given you uh, all the information that you need. If you do require more information about ACU, yes, definitely get in touch with us. Our online course browser, our website has got so much information. But as I mentioned earlier, our Ask ACU team. So on that note, thank you very much to our panel, to our audience and to our moderators on the end, um, answering all of the questions. We, yeah, we really appreciate your help. Wishing you all the very best and we look forward to seeing you at ACU one day. Take care, everyone. Mm -hmm.